Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. And all of the ground is sinking sand. Let's rise up as we pray together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We bless your name for this time to hear from you one more time. I'm asking that, Lord, you will give us understanding in all things, and you will open the word to us in Jesus' name. Let the word have us way. Let the word bring transformation. And let the word do the work in our hearts and lives in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you've answered. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. We thank the Lord for thus far the Lord has brought us. And uh, we're going to get into the word at this time. It's going to be a two-part message, two-part series. Because I won't be able to finish everything today. And I want to talk on something that many times people don't pay attention to. And yet it's very fundamental. It's very important if we're going to make a success of our lives. God does not want us to fail in life. Say it out loud. God does not want me to fail in life. Say it one more time. God does not want me to fail in life. And, and he doesn't want us to fail. He wants us to succeed. But if we're going to succeed in life, what we want to share today, and I'm going to wrap this up next Sunday, if Jesus tarries, uh, it's very important. I want you to open your Bible and turn with me to Romans chapter 5 and in verse 17. Romans chapter 5 and in verse 17. Romans 5, what verse? Fantastic, 17. Uh, hear this, Romans 5, 17. It says, For if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more, somebody say much more, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. Amen. It says that Christ has brought to us righteousness and the abundance of grace. And as a result of this, we can reign in life. Meaning that we will not be defeated in life. Who are the people that reign in life? Kings, isn't it? I said kings, isn't it? Kings reign in life. But I want you to look at something. You see, Christ brings the abundance of grace. And he brings the gift of righteousness for us to reign in life. And if kings reign in life, there are two things that Christ has brought for us to be able to reign. And I want you to see something in 1 Corinthians chapter 1. 1 Corinthians Chapter 1, and then in verse 24, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 24. But unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Say it out loud, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. Keep those two in mind. And then in verse 30. But of him are ye in Christ. Did you see that? Of him are ye in Christ Jesus. Who of God is made unto us. Christ is made unto us. Wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption. I want to talk on what I've titled reigning through the wisdom of Christ. You see in verse 24 that we read, 
it talked about Christ as the power of God. He also talks about Christ as the wisdom of God. Many times, people don't focus on the wisdom side. They think a lot on the power side. But you see, it takes both wisdom and power to truly dominate. And in the series, we want to see that to truly reign, we need the wisdom of Christ. Wisdom is very fundamental. Wisdom is very important. I want you to see something in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 and in verse 54. Matthew 13, 54. And when he was come into his own country, this is Jesus coming into his own country, he taught them in their synagogue in so much that they were astonished and said, Whence has this man, this wisdom, and these mighty works, mighty miracles. Did you notice that? They saw in Christ the wisdom and the power. They saw in Christ the wisdom and the power. Somebody say, the wisdom and the power. Say it very well. Say it very well. The wisdom and the power. For us to truly reign in life, we need wisdom and we need power. And my, my assignment for to, the Sunday today, and if Jesus tarries next Sunday, is to focus on the wisdom part. Brothers and sisters, you see, wisdom will distinguish you. Wisdom is very critical. To show you how critical wisdom is, I want you to see, you've heard about Solomon, haven't you? How many of you have heard about Solomon here? Solomon in the Bible. Okay, very good. I want you to see how wisdom distinguished him. Look at Matthew chapter 12 and look at verse 42. Matthew chapter 12, verse 42. It says, the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment with this generation and shall condemn it. Why? For she came from the uttermost parts of the earth to hear what? To hear what? The wisdom, the wisdom, the wisdom of Solomon. You see how wisdom distinguished Solomon? And the wisdom made this woman to travel a long journey just to hear wisdom. Wisdom is very important in life. And so Christ gives this example of the queen of the south that came to hear the wisdom of Solomon. And then Jesus says, and behold, a greater than Solomon is here. Christ, the wisdom of God and the power of God. Christ is the wisdom of God and the, and the power of God. When Christ dwells in us, wisdom dwells in us. And it's important for us to understand that by the wisdom of the Lord, the expectation of the Lord is that we will reign in life. And I'm going to cover that next Sunday about the outworking of wisdom and the practice of wisdom that helps us to truly reign in life. But I want you to see how the Bible describes the wisdom of Solomon. And then we'll look at what is wisdom. And then I want to talk about the possibilities through wisdom. And then I want to talk about the path that we've got to take to wisdom in this service today. Look at 1 Kings chapter 4. 1 Kings chapter 4. And then in verse 29, 1 Kings 4, 29. And God, somebody say God. Somebody say God. And God gave Solomon wisdom. And God gave Solomon wisdom. This is fantastic. You see, God 
uh, to remind you about the story for those who have read this before and you have not, you're hearing it now. The Lord appeared unto Solomon and then God asked Solomon, Solomon, what do you want me to give you? And then Solomon, you know, didn't have to think for a long time. He said, God, give me wisdom. And the answer, the request of Solomon to what God had asked surprised God. That Solomon did not ask for the death, the life of his enemies. He didn't ask even for riches for himself. But he treasured and prioritized wisdom above all things. And then God said, I will surprise you. And God gave him wisdom and gave him all the other things he didn't ask for. My question to you today is this. If you were, and then God appeared unto you now, and say, and calls your name, what do you want me to give you? What will you ask for? Okay, somebody says wisdom, because you've heard about Solomon. But if you didn't read this, you say, Pastor, I know you talked about Solomon, but you know there are bills that need to be paid. And then so, what will be your request? But you see, the point is this. Solomon prioritized wisdom. And you're going to see from scriptures why wisdom is very important. You see, because he prioritized wisdom, God gave him wisdom. And the wisdom brought money, brought riches, brought fame, and all the things. Do you know that somebody can have a lot of money and without wisdom does not know how to manage it? And the money disappears. You see, wisdom is very important. Wisdom, therefore, must be prioritized in life. Watch this in First, the first Kings chapter 4, verse 29. And God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. Somebody say exceeding much. Say it. Say it. Say it. Say it. Now, please look up. There are people that when you call their names, there are some things that jumps out at you, isn't it? If you call a football star, a soccer star, and you mention the name like this, people will easily just say soccer, isn't it? Isn't it? Isn't it? There are other things, there are other names you call. And then if I mention somebody's name, for example, and that person is an icon in basketball, the moment I mention his name, you don't even need to think twice. You will say basketball. The name is synonymous with what? Basketball. When the Lord, our Lord Jesus Christ was going to refer to Solomon, he refers to Solomon and the wisdom that he had. That man truly had wisdom. Because God gave him wisdom that distinguished him. I pray that your life will be so distinguished by wisdom. That your life and your name will be synonymous with wisdom. Because you see, when there is wisdom in a person's life, there will be the works of wisdom. There will be the results of wisdom. There will be the products of wisdom. And your life will be so lived that it will bring tremendous glory to God and will distinguish you in Jesus' name. And so Solomon, God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. That means that you truly can grow in wisdom. The wisdom exceeding much. And when you truly look at the life of Solomon, he was really given wisdom. Look at the book of Proverbs. Look at Ecclesiastes. Look at the things that God used him to write. You will see that he was truly, he was truly given wisdom. Now watch this as we continue to read. And largeness of heart, even as the sand that is on the sea shore. That tells you. That this wisdom is, big, is higher and greater than the wisdom you get from books. 
Because the wisdom you get from books will be limited. But this wisdom, exceeding much, as the sand of, on the sea, of the sea, on the seashore. Now watch verse 30. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all the children of the East Country. You see, what God gives will bring you, will help you to excel. And Solomon's wisdom excelled the wisdom of all. Somebody say all. Somebody say all. Of all the children of the East Country. And all the wisdom of Egypt. For he was wiser than all men. Than Ethan, the Ezraite. And Ammon, and Calco, and Dada, the sons of Mary, and his fame was in all nations round about. Amen. Amen. You see the names that were mentioned there? This must have been the top people that people considered as being wise. But then, when it comes to the time of Solomon, they saw that the wisdom of Solomon truly excelled. You know, when you are comparing, for example, let's say in the academia, if you're going to compare a professor, you won't compare a professor to somebody who is in elementary, just learning science. Will you do that? You will say that one doesn't make sense. You will compare a professor to another word, professor. And so when the word of life tells us that Solomon excelled in wisdom above Ethan, the Ezra, Ezraite, and the other people that the word of God mentioned. It means those were the top people that the wisdom God gave him caused him to excel. I pray that as we get into this series, God gives us wisdom. That wisdom will cause you to excel in Jesus' name. You know, the way the wisdom of God will cause you to excel in your personal life, in your career, in, the th in your business, in the things that you do, there will be the display. Somebody say the display. The display of wisdom, even in your family. So, what is wisdom? What is wisdom? Now, for me to explain what wisdom is, I'm going to take a verse of scriptures and then I will explain it. In Exodus chapter 36, Exodus 36, and then in verse 1, Exodus 36, verse 1. Then Roth Bezalel and Aholiab and every wise hearted man in whom the Lord put wisdom and understanding, watch this now, to know how, to walk all manner of work for the service of the sanctuary according to all that the Lord had commanded. What therefore is wisdom? Wisdom is the know-how. Knowledge is, to know, is the know-what. Knowledge deals with data, with information. But wisdom deals with the application, the right, the correct application of knowledge. Facts constitute knowledge. And there are people that have a lot of facts. There are people that have a lot of knowledge. There are people that know this, this, that. But how do they then use that to, to help their lives so that their lives become what God intends for it to be? You, haven't you seen people, even in the academia, they may be professors, but they have a lot of information. But their lives look very terrible. They can, their lives are not all together. God wants us to have wisdom. Wisdom is the know-how. And it's the know-how of wisdom that is the solution of wisdom to every problem. Don't forget that. The know-how of wisdom is the solution of wisdom to every problem. Jesus, our Savior, knew what he needed to do. He had the know-how. 
The know-how that was the solution of wisdom to every problem. And as we trust God to give us wisdom, you will discover that there will be the solution of wisdom to every problem that confronts you in Jesus' name. Do you realize? I want you to pay attention. I, I can begin to give you some examples. But here was a man, the king of Syria, or Syria, was trying to get the other king. But he saw he couldn't get the other king. Why? Because as they were planning, the Lord revealed to Elisha, and Elisha knew what they were planning. And he would tell the king, don't pass this, don't go there. And so the king saved himself and avoided destruction and death or even captivity. And so the king was surprised. He said, who is the traitor here, so to speak? Who is giving our secrets out? How come we can't capture this king? And then one of the people in the cabinet said, there is nobody here telling your secret. There is a man, his name is Elisha, a prophet, Elisha. He said, as long as Elisha is alive, you can capture that man. Because everything we are discussing here, he, can, he, can, he, he is hearing. He knows by the gifts of the Spirit what you are planning against the other king. Thank God for the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the gifts of the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. I said, glory to God. Hallelujah. And so he said, okay, we know what to do. Since he will not let us capture the king, go capture him. You see, they are not wise. You can't cap you're planning to capture the other man. He's telling your secret. You now want to go and capture the, the man. They wanted to try anyway. So they came. And as they came, they surrounded where Elisha was. And chariots. It's like you want to kill a mosquito and you bring a machine gun to kill a mosquito. Say this one must be a very dangerous mosquito. And so they surrounded the place. And then the servant of Elisha, that day, he said, he said, alas, my master, what shall we do? The people surrounded. Elisha said, fear not. And you see, when you truly believe God, there is nothing to fear. I said, there is nothing to fear. I said, there is nothing to fear. I speak to you today, fear not. When you're walking with God, there is nothing to fear. Elisha said, fear not. They that be with us are more than they that be with them. You know, if you knew the angel that encamp around those that fear God, you will not fear. If you knew the presence and the power of God that surround us, you will not fear. As we're here in this sanctuary, Jesus is here. Where two or three are gathered together in his name is there in the midst of them. All around us here, innumerable company of angels. God is watching us. The presence and the power of God is mighty here. Oh, you might not see them until God opens your eyes. And so, the servant of Elisha didn't see them. And so Elisha said, God opened his eyes. And the Bible says, and God opened the eyes of that young man. And he saw surrounding Elisha. He didn't see chariots, ordinary chariots. He saw chariots of fire, greater than the chariots of men. If you knew the people surrounding us, the angels with fire, the power of the spirit, the fire power that the devil cannot mess with, you will, your fear will vanish completely. I said your fear will vanish completely. And so the Lord opened the eyes of that young man. And you can be rest assured that that man calmed down. But now watch this. Elisha said, I know who you are looking for. You are not truly looking for me. You are looking for the king. I'll take you to the person you are looking for. Remember they wanted to capture him. He said, God, give them blindness. That man had authority. That man had power. If you know the power we have in Christ, if you know the authority we have in Christ, you will not fear. And so, the Lord gave them blindness. Those, one, those people will say, what have we got in ourselves to today? And so, he led them. He said, I know you, who you are looking for. He led them to the place of the king. And the king saw the people. He said, my father, my father, shall I smite them? He said, don't smite them. Wisdom. Wisdom. He said, how will you smite the people God has delivered into your hand? He said, give them food to eat. 
They gave them food. Those people ate well. Their eyes opened. I'm sure they, they wouldn't eat that food with. They're saying, we don't know what is going to happen. We are, eating, we are eating in the territory of the enemy. <laughs> they ate the food. The Bible says they went and they never came back. You see the display of wisdom. You see, wisdom is critical in life. Many problems that are perennial, they happen over and over and over and over, can be easily solved with the display of wisdom. Many things that sometimes people pray and pray and pray and pray and pray about, if they will only live by the, by the leading of wisdom and the wisdom of the Lord, those things will be just easily solved. And so, we find in the word what wisdom is, is the know-how. Very quickly, what are some of the possibilities through the wisdom of Christ? I want to tell you, number one, that God is the only wise God. You can look at this in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 17, and Jude uh, verse 25, and Romans 16, 27. We won't have time to go into that. But God is the only wise God. And I am a child of God. Look at the, what is available to me in God's wisdom bank. Inexhaustible wisdom bank. Just like there is a bank for money. We all know money bank, where you put money. There is a wisdom bank. Inexhaustible riches, resources of wisdom. That whenever we come to a crossroad in life, we just go to God and there will be the display of divine wisdom in Jesus' name. Not only that, the Bible tells us that, the, you see, the wisdom of this world will come to north. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6, very quickly, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 6, how be it? We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to, north, to nothing. You see, the wisdom of this world will come to north. Look at that, for example, the wisdom of the people that said, well, we don't really want to, they, they, they are not thinking about God. What happened when 9-11 happened to us as a nation? The churches, people are going to churches. People run to the churches because the wisdom of man comes with what? Enough. What happens also during the COVID-19 and people are not sure of what to, to do. And then there is now a drawing towards God because the wisdom of this world will come to what? Nothing. That's why the wisdom of God is very important in life. And I will show you later how to get the wisdom of God. But you see, the priority of wisdom is clear because Proverbs chapter 4 verse 7 says, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is what? Wisdom is what? Wisdom is what? So, because wisdom, what does it mean by the principal? When it says principal, it means it's the first. The first in place the first in time, the first in order, the first in rank. If I give you 10 things to pick from, and wisdom is one of those things, what is it that you have to pick first? Wisdom. What is it you have to pick first? I'm, I, the way you are answering, I don't know whether you're convinced. What is it you have to pick first? Wisdom. wisdom. You say, Pastor, Pastor, please, can I just pick wisdom and money right now? Wisdom. You see, the money will come when the wisdom is there. If the money comes and the wisdom is not there, what will happen? The money. Haven't you seen people that win the lottery? And you read their stats? They won a lot of money. And in a matter of uh, just a short time, the, the person that won a lot of money, the money is all what? Gone. Because there's no wisdom. Haven't you seen some people even in the sports world? Different sports. They, they got a lot of money from sports, but then after some time, the money is what? Gone. It's gone. So, wisdom is the principal thing. It's the principal thing. It's the principal thing. It's the first thing. It's the first in place. It's the first in time. It's the first in order. It's the first in rank. Every day, Lord, give me wisdom today. Give me wisdom as I interact. 
Give me wisdom in the place of work. Give me wisdom. You see the life of our Lord Jesus Christ? They came to trap him, but they couldn't trap him. They said, never man speak like you speak. They came to Jesus. They brought the coin to him. They said, uh, no, they came to him and they wanted to just trap him. They said, should we give money to, should we give unto Caesar or not? Tribute unto Caesar or not? And then Jesus said, give me a coin. Look at the display of wisdom. Whose image and superscription is this? They didn't know which direction it was going to go. They said, Caesar's. It says, give unto Caesar the thing that belongs to Caesar and to God the things that belongs to God. The people were dumbfounded. The display of wisdom characterized the life of Jesus. Here was a woman that was caught in adultery in the very act. And as they brought the woman to Jesus Christ, they said, Moses in the law said, do this. What do you say? They want to see if Jesus will oppose Moses. And then they will say, well, we told you, it's not following, the, following the, the, the word of God or following the Old Testament and all this. And so Jesus Christ was writing. And, and as do, as do, write, just writing. And then they said, what do you say? What do you say? He lifted up himself. He said, the person without a sin amongst all of you, pick the first stone and stone the woman. You see the display of wisdom. One by one, from the eldest to the lowest, they looked at the woman. They first, they look at their hearts. They said, there's so much sin here. They look at the woman, and then they disappeared. And then every one of them was gone. And it was just that woman and Jesus only left. And the woman was wondering, what would Jesus do? Jesus said, where are your accusers? And he says, they've all gone. No man. He says, neither do I condemn you, but go and sin no more. You see the display of wisdom? You see, wisdom will help us to overcome the traps of the adversary, the traps of the enemy. They are asking you a question, maybe in the place of work, and then the wisdom of God will help you to know how to, to exp express yourself, what to say. I pray that God will help us to really live the life that is the display of wisdom in Jesus' name. So the Bible says wisdom is what? The principal thing. Therefore do what? Get what? And with all thy getting, get what? Understanding. Now, what are some of the possibilities through wisdom? In Proverbs chapter 3, Proverbs chapter 3 and in verse 13, Proverbs 3, 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Happy. Somebody say happy. Somebody say happy. Happy is the man or the woman that finds wisdom. And the man or the woman that gets understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. And the gain thereof than fine gold. You see, he's telling us about the priority of wisdom now. She is more precious than rubies. Now, it personifies wisdom. She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou can desire are not to be compared unto her. That's why it's the principal thing. Length of days is in her right hand. Did you see that? Long life is, is, is attracted. It's part of what wisdom brings. Length of days is in her right hand. Because it helps you to know what to eat, also what not to eat. It helps you to know what, how to live and how not to live. It says length of days is in her right hand. And in her left hand, What? Riches. Somebody say riches. And honor. You see, our wisdom will attract riches. Our wisdom will attract honor. Our wisdom will attract the things that you desire. And then it says, and that's why it's a priority. It's a principal thing. Our ways are ways of pleasantness. And all our paths are what? Peace. You see, wisdom will bring peace. Wisdom will bring what? Peace. And then he says, she's a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Even God, in verse 19, the Lord by wisdom has founded the earth. And by understanding has he established the heavens. You see how God created the heart, the world? You see, God, that was the display of wisdom in creation. God didn't create fish and say, oh my, oh my, where will fish live? Oh, I forgot to create water. 
and then there is chaos, and then it's, it's, you know, the fishes are dead. Let me create water, and let me now bring fish. He didn't do that. The water was there. The fish had to stay in the water. And then there was the vegetation. Human beings would need the oxygen. He created everything systematically. There was order in wisdom. You see, when there is wisdom, there is order, and there will be no chaos. God wants our lives to be lives of order. God does not want our lives to be fire, fighting fire all the time. God does not want our lives to be lives of chaos and confusion. It's the display of wisdom that there is the display of order, orderliness. The life we live must be the life of order. And so, wisdom is very important. In Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3, Proverbs 24, verse 3, it says, true wisdom is an house builded. Have you thought about that? How what builds a house? If I were to ask you, and we have some, of, some young adults amongst us, and we have uh, some young adults amongst us, and, and uh, younger ones, married and not married. If I were to ask you, what will build a, a life? What will build a family? Some people might say, money. Oh, money will be. Haven't you seen some people that have a lot of money, and yet there is the problem is, the more the money, the more the problem. But he says, wisdom, true wisdom is an house builded. It's a life builded. It's a family builded. True wisdom is, a, is an house builded. And by understanding, it is established. And by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yea, a man of understanding increased strength. Just like uh, uh, Elisha was strong. There was nothing to fear because there was the wisdom of the Lord. And then, for by wise counsel, verse 6, thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude of counselors, there is what? Safety. As I wrap this up, this point here, you see, divine wisdom will open doors of opportunities. Divine wisdom will do what? Open doors of opportunity. You remember in Acts chapter 6, verse 3, they were looking for people to serve. And one of the conditions was that find people of honest report, full of the Holy Ghost. And what? Wisdom. Wisdom will open doors of opportunity. Wisdom. Look at, the, look at Joseph. Pharaoh had had a dream. And the dream was... Uh, uh, such that he couldn't forget them because it was significant. And so uh, Joseph uh, uh, was called because the magicians couldn't interpret the dream. The people around Pharaoh couldn't interpret the dream. And so one of the, one of the people in the cabinet, that was the butler. The butler said, I remember my fault today. There was a man when we were kept in prison. There was a man that uh, uh, interpreted our dreams. The butler and the baker were in prison. He said, he told us our dream, the interpretation of our dreams. And it happened exactly as he interpreted it. And then he said, let's bring him. So they brought, they were going to bring Joseph. Did you notice something about Joseph? If you read the Bible well, Joseph just didn't just leave the prison to go to a king like that. He cleaned up himself. He was going to the king. You see, that was the display of wisdom. If you don't clean up yourself and you're going to the king, the king will say, which kind of man is this? You, demo, you just uh, mess up the glory that was to be revealed. But he cleaned up himself. Children of God must be children of dignity. You are never to be pitied but envied. Even though Joseph was in prison, prison was not in him. Prison was not inside him. I said prison was not inside him. Well, you may be going through a problem now. Don't let the problem get inside you. Because God will give you victory. Because God will give you victory. Because you are more than a conqueror in Jesus' name. You see, there are times people go through things. And what they are going through things also has gotten into them. And so they are not able to triumph. I pray you will not live like that. But you will understand that you are more than a conqueror. In Jesus' name. And so, Joseph was brought. And as they brought Joseph, Pharaoh interpreted the dream. And he said, the dream of Pharaoh is one. 
And then he began to say it. He began to say it. Pharaoh said, can we find a man that has this kind of spirit? A man like this? The wisdom of God. He says, we, I give everything to you. You just run this nation. Think about the opportunity that wisdom brings. I pray that you will live your life with wisdom in Jesus' name. I said you will live your life with wisdom in Jesus' name. You know, I remember one of my, uh, one, uh, in, 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 uh, as part of the work I was doing, the, 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 the person just saw the work. And as he saw the work, there was progress, there was peace. He says, we hand everything over to you. Take over everything. Take over everything. Take over everything. You see, and I'm still learning more and growing in wisdom. But I'm just giving you that example to show you the opportunities that what God's wisdom brings into our lives. Wisdom is the principal thing. Desire wisdom. Desire wisdom. Desire wisdom. There are more, many more things we can talk about. We can talk about Daniel, but our time is going. Let's quickly look at very few minutes. I want to tell, tell you how to assess wisdom, the path to the wisdom of Christ. Because next Sunday, if Jesus tarries, I want to talk about the outworkings of wisdom. I want to talk about the practice of divine wisdom. And some things that, you know, are very fundamental, very important if we're going to really operate in wisdom and wisdom paths and wisdom ways. Those are the things I want to focus on next Sunday, Jesus said. But then, the path to the wisdom of God. How do you access wisdom? Number one, we have got to understand that, you know, from where we have read that Christ is the wisdom of God is also the power of God. And so, we must make sure that we accept Christ into our hearts. Because from where we read, Christ is made unto us the wisdom, is made unto us wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and re redemption. We read that in 1 Corinthians 1, 24. But how else do we access wisdom? You know, other than the fact that we are born again, how else? In Proverbs chapter 9 and in verse 10, Proverbs 9, verse what? Proverbs 9, verse what? Verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. If we truly want to have wisdom, we must reverence God. We must fear the Lord. You see, this is not like the fear of the, that people have for rattlesnake. It's you, you reverence the Lord. You don't want to offend the Lord. You so love the Lord that you don't want to make him unhappy. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You see the life of Joseph. He said, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against who? God. He so respected God. He so honored God. He said, I don't want to offend him. And so those are the people that, will give, that God will give wisdom to. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the knowledge of the holy is what? Understanding. So wisdom comes as we fear the Lord. Anybody that does not fear God, that just does things anyhow, just in no regard for God, uh, no regard for his word, you know, that person will not be able to walk in wisdom, the wisdom of God. Not only that, in Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7 verse 24, it says, our Lord Jesus Christ actually was speaking here in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24. Christ, our Lord, says, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, you hear the word of Christ and you do them, I will liken him unto a wise man. I will liken him unto a wise man. What brings wisdom is hearing and doing the words of Jesus. You see, when you hear, and, and, and next Sunday, we're going to look at some of the words of the Lord and the, the pathways, the wisdom ways that we've got to f look at. So, when we hear his word, and we don't despise his word. You see, anybody that says he's wiser than the only wise God, we know he's a liar. Is that, is that not true? Is that not true? If somebody, somebody is the only wise God, if somebody took the first position, and it's well, it's known that this is the first position. And the person says it's, not, it's, uh, it's wiser than the first position. How can you? That's a lie. You have to prove it. And there's no person, no one on the surface of this earth that can prove to us that it's wiser than the almighty God. Nobody. 
In fact, anybody that wants to show that, God will show him that he's not wise. The Bible says, the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. And so, it's very important to make sure we keep the word. Not only that, you know, the Bible tells us in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 15, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto what? Salvation. When our children hear the word of God, when the children obey the word of God, as well as adults, the word of God makes us wise unto salvation. Because there's a judgment coming. We read this morning, we learned this morning, that God sits on the throne. And that throne is still the throne where God will administer judgment. And so, it makes us to be wise on salvation. It's like somebody that sees fire and wants to go inside fire. A wise person will see fire and will do what? Mm -mm, I don't want to go inside fire. That's the way of wisdom. And I pray that the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the symbol. Finally, finally, because of our time, of, uh, because of time, in James chapter 1, and then from verse 5 to verse 7, and then we'll pray. James chapter 5, chapter 1, from verse 5 to verse 7. James 1, 5 to 7. If any of you lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask of God. Like Solomon asked and God answered. Is there a naughty problem that you don't seem to know how to solve or handle? Let him ask of God. If any of you lack wisdom and you need the wisdom to solve this particular situation, let him ask of God. That give it to all men liberally, generously. Do you see how God gave Solomon wisdom? As the sand of the seashore. He wants to give us wisdom liberally. God is a generous God. The Bible says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all, we do what? Ask or think. Because God gives how? Generously. You know, don't, uh, don't sometimes people, they treat God like, and they look at God like they look at uh, maybe their uncle or, their, or somebody that they know. The person you say, how are you? And the person says, I'm doing well. Our school is going to start very soon. And we're going to get back to school. Okay, very good, very good. Um, and the person is leaving. He says, before you go. And the person is looking at uh, the wallet. And he sees $50 bills, $100 bills. And he sees $10 bills. And he sees $5 bills. And the person that came all the way to come and say hello to uncle before going. It's only the $5 bill that uncle can look at and give to the person. And the, the person says, uncle, your wallet is full of money. And it's only $5. But the person didn't say it out loud to uncle, but in the mind. Says, uncle, how can you treat me like this? And sometimes when they come to God, they think God is looking at $5 bills, $1 bill, and all that. God, is not, God doesn't operate like that. God wants to so bless your life that your life will be a trophy for his glory in Jesus' name. It says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him do what? Ask of God that give it to all men how? Liberally. And upbraid it not. And it shall be given him. But then let him ask in faith. Don't doubt God. It's an insult to doubt the Lord. Don't doubt the Lord. He so loves, he wants to give. Let him ask in faith. Nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think he shall receive what? Anything of the Lord. So, today the Lord has spoken to us about what? Reigning through the wisdom of Christ. This is our part one. And as we have looked at what God has spoken to our hearts, that the Lord wants us to reign in life. By Christ and Christ Jesus has been made unto us the power of God and the wisdom of God. And the wisdom part we must not neglect as we spend time to pray and we look for the demonstration of the power of God. We must remember there's the wisdom component in life. And as we look to the Lord that there will be the baptism of wisdom that as God gave Solomon wisdom and you ask God today, Lord give me wisdom. 
We need wisdom in life. In fact, even a person that is wise will become what? Wiser. That's what the Bible says. You see, in Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9, it says, Give instruction to a wise man, and it will be yet what? Wiser. We need wisdom so that we grow in wisdom. And as we grow in wisdom, our lives will then will scale new levels of impact in Jesus' name. How many of you truly desire wisdom? Remember, wisdom is the principal thing. And with all thy getting, do what? Get understanding. If you truly desire wisdom, rise on your feet and then you're going to talk to the Lord. Lord, wisdom. I seek wisdom. I desire wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. 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 That we pray, Lord, give me wisdom. Pray, pray, pray. We do we must desire wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. 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 How we need wisdom in life. 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 The wisdom of the Lord. The help of the Lord. The wisdom of the Lord. Wisdom will distinguish you. Wisdom will separate you. God gave Solomon wisdom and understanding exceeding much. God wants to give exceeding much wisdom. If the heart is right, if the desire is right, God wants to give exceeding much wisdom and largeness of heart. Even as the sand that is on the seashore. Even as the sand that is on the seashore. Lord, I want to be wiser. Wiser for your glory. Wiser for your honor. True wisdom is a house builded. It's a life builded. It's a family builded. It's a life builded. Lord, help me to be wise. To live wisely. To bring glory to you. In the name of Jesus. Christ. True wisdom is a house builded and by understanding it is established and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Yea, a wise man is strong. Yea, a man of understanding increases strength. Oh, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. And Solomon's wisdom excelled. And Solomon's wisdom excelled. The wisdom of the children of the east country the wisdom of solomon excelled the wisdom of the children of the east country and all and the, all the wisdom of egypt glory to god oh wisdom wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing wisdom is the principal thing divine wisdom will open doors of opportunities divine wisdom will take us to new heights and new levels divine wisdom will help us to avoid at our problems and sorrows divine wisdom will help, will help us to live our lives with distinction Divine wisdom will, live, will help us to live our lives to his glory. Oh, my Father, give me wisdom. Help me, Lord, to walk in wisdom. Lord, I desire wisdom. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraid it not, and it shall be given him. Oh, Lord, I ask for wisdom today, and I ask in faith, and I ask in faith, and I ask believing, and I ask trusting you, and I ask holding on to your hand. Lord, wisdom, is there any particular area that you need the display of wisdom? Wisdom in your family, wisdom in your finances, how you even manage money, wisdom in different areas, wisdom, 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 wisdom. Wisdom, wisdom, wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Help me, Lord, to have to live in wisdom. Wisdom to on how to relate with other people. Wisdom in the place of work. Wisdom with friends. Wisdom with people that may even appear to be enemies or foes. Wisdom, Lord, I receive it today. If you're not born again, that's the beginning. 
the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord that will make you to turn to the Savior and that will make you to live the life that pleases God. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing. Wisdom is the principal thing that will free our lives from chaos. It will bring order into our lives. It will bring victory into our lives. It will help us to triumph. It will help us to have dominion in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. If you have not given your heart to Christ, give your heart to the Lord today. That's the beginning. That's the beginning. Christ is made unto us uh, righteousness. It's made unto us wisdom, righteousness, redemption, sanctification. And so you give your heart to the Lord. It's the beginning of the wisdom that then God will channel unto you. We're going to pray together. If you have not done that, do that. And I'll pray for you as well. And then for all of us, a wise man will hear and will be yet wiser. There is the opportunity to grow in wisdom. There's the opportunity to increase in wisdom. And then greater doors will open. I said greater doors will open in Jesus' name. You know, Joseph displayed wisdom in Potiphar's house. Joseph displayed wisdom in the prison. Joseph displayed wisdom even in the palace. And that wisdom got him to the very top. Father, we thank you. We bless and magnify your name for the revelation of your word. You have spoken to our hearts today about wisdom. Them. How we know wisdom is critical. Wisdom is the principal thing. Lord, I pray that you will help us to live our lives in wisdom that will bring glory and honor to your holy name in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for as many as have not been converted. If there, perhaps anyone here that is not converted, I pray their Lord, I pray that the word of God is as, uh, that as from a child. You've had the Holy Scriptures, which is able to make you wise unto salvation. As many as are not converted yet, open their eyes of understanding. And help them to come to the knowledge of the Lord in Jesus' name. I pray that the power of cancelled sin will be broken from their lives in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that the grace to live the life that glorifies you, that walk in the fear of the Lord, because the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Them, you grant unto us in Jesus name Lord I pray that as wisdom distinguished Joseph as wisdom distinguished Daniel as wisdom distinguished those who have gone before us Esther Lord I pray that the same wisdom will be our portion and the wisdom will open doors of opportunity that will distinguish us in Jesus name I pray that our lives will never be the same again. Any, sp any peculiar challenge or problem that needs the display of wisdom, oh God of glory, grant wisdom to your people in Jesus' name. Let the naughty issues, the difficult problems, let them be resolved easily in Jesus' name. Christ has been made known unto us the power of God and the wisdom of God and is the combination of the power and the wisdom that makes us to reign. I pray that, Lord, by your power, you will help us to truly reign through wisdom in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. Anything that needs the mighty move of God to destroy in the lives, to be destroyed in the lives of your people, I pray right now those things contrary to their progress, to their victory, will be destroyed in Jesus' name and they will truly reign. They will reign in life. They will reign in their health. They will reign in their finances. They will reign in their places of work. They will reign in their careers. In the name of Jesus, we well, thank you because we know you have answered. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Please be seated. We have come to the end of the service. Uh, don't forget, next Sunday, we're finishing the series and we're going to be covering some of the practical areas for the display of wisdom. And so make sure you're here and invite your friends and let them come and benefit from the word of life. God bless you richly.
Have a wonderful week.